In this demonstration, we will install Apache Web Server on CentOS 8 machine. The process for installing Apache package is very similar among all Linux distributions. Just like Windows Server Web Server in IIS, the Apache is also ready to be deployed as anonymous web service as soon as you install the HTTPD package. As always, make sure your Linux system is up to date. So I'm going to log into SU. And then I'm going to enter yum update. I have already run the updates, but if you want to run the update because your system is not up to date yet, the command is yum update. Next thing we will do is to turn off the firewall and SC Linux. I have already turned them off. And if you would like to know how to do that, there is a separate video on my YouTube channel. You can watch that and it will explain how you can turn off the firewall and SC Linux. In this demonstration, we will be running this Apache web package inside a lab environment. That's why I turn off the firewall and SC Linux completely. But in a real world production environment as a system administrator, you should be adding exception rules to your firewall to allow web systems to run instead of completely turning them off. Again, you can check how to turn off your firewall and SC Linux on my other video, and I will post a link to it. If you would like to support me, please subscribe to my channel, and I really appreciate it. One more thing we need to do before we move forward is to make sure the host name is set properly and it is uh, associated with the proper IP address of this particular server. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm simply going to type hostname and it will return my current default hostname, which is localhost.local .local domain, which makes absolutely no sense. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the hostname to one that we like. So I'll be setting my hostname to um, my current uh, configuration according to my current configuration so it will be hostname ctl set dash hostname so i'm going to call this web lnx dot sanuja dot local so i'm going to use web lnx dot sanuja dot local so make sure that you go with whatever your local or administrative domain uh, configurations I'm going to click left, press, press enter. And if I go hostname now, it will return as web lnx.sanuja.local. Perfect. Now, the next thing we need to do, we need to also change the host file because the host file probably currently pointing to the loopback IP addresses, but we need to set it to the IP address of this server. To change that information, what we're going to do, we will go to the host file and we will edit that. I'll be using nano. So it is in the etc folder and the file is host with the S at the end. Press enter and it will open your host file. You will see two items in there, two lines, one for the IPv4 loopback and the other one for the IPv6 loopback. But for me, I don't need the IPv6. I'm just going to simply delete it, but you can decide to leave it as it is. And then I'm going to enter the IP address of this server. I have set the IP address here as a static IP address, like as always it should be. And it is currently is set to 192.168.1.7 with pointing back to my Windows Server in the same network. If you would like to know what I why I did that, you can check my previous videos. But in your situation, you don't need to do that. You just need to make sure that you have a static IP address and it has all the configuration is properly done. And so my IP address is 192.168.1.7 and it will be responding to web lnx. 
sanuja.local. And I also want it to be uh, responding to the web ln x. So I'm going to enter those two. And then I'm going to exit. Make sure you save the file. And you can reopen it and make sure it is saved. Now, if I go ping uh, web lnx, it should respond with the IP address of this server, which is 192.168.1.7. And if I also ping web lnx.sanuja.local, it should also respond back with the 192.168.1.7 IP address. So let's go ahead and install the Apache web package. To do that, we're gonna enter yum install httpd. I'm gonna just enter minus y, which basically mean that whatever the prompt it comes up with for installation, it's just gonna simply enter that as yes, so it'll go faster. Now we have installed the Apache web package. We will see what we have inside that folder. The Apache web package is installed under CD, etc, or etc, httpd folder. So if you move to http folder by CD, etc, httpd command, and if you go ls, you can see several files. And what we are interested in is the folder called conf, C-O-N-F. That's where the Apache server configuration files are located. So let's move in there. So it's CD, C-O-N-F, enter. And now we are inside the configuration folder. And if you look at the files in there, there's two files. And the one we are interested in is the httpd.conf. And this file is the one that we need to edit in order to configure our Apache web service. I'm gonna use nano to open it. And in this file, there are a couple of things we should look out for. One of them is called server root. The server root is where all your configuration documents are located. Currently, it is set to etc. httpd folder, and that is the default folder. Unless you have a need to change this, I would leave it as it is. For this demonstration, we're just gonna leave it. But we will take a note. The configuration folder is in the etc. httpd folder. The next important thing here is the listen directive. So let's go and find it. Right here. The listen directive on the httpd.com file advise the Apache server what network interface it should be listening to for HTTP or HTTPS request. The standard port for the web server is typically is port number 80, but we do have the ability to change it to a non-standard port. Most servers have more than one network interface, and that's why we can also configure the network interface with multiple, multiple network interfaces with multiple static IP addresses in here. For now, we will just add our static single IP address with the standard port 80. Just before we do that, you need to also make sure that you have a static IP address for your server. On my configuration, what I have done for this demonstration, I gave an IP address of 192.168.1.7 in the same subnet as uh, the, my uh, network server like our Windows server that I have done pre on previous videos. 
and my RS or my router is pointing to the the Windows server, which is 192.168.1.3, and I have the DNS set to the same thing. For whatever the configuration you are doing, it is always recommended that you have a static IP address for your web service. So once you have make sure that you have a static IP address set, you need to let the Apache web system or web service know which IP address that it should be looking for to providing its service. So in this situation, we're gonna use this IP address as the IP address for our Apache web server. So we're gonna enter the IP address of this server here. It's gonna be 192.168.1.7 and it will be listening on the default port of port 80. And if you have multiple interfaces, as I mentioned before, you can add multiple listen uh, IP addresses for each interface. In my lab environment, I only have one interface and it has a static IP of 192.168.1.7 and we're gonna use that on port 80 which is the default port for typical web services to run this Apache server. Now we have entered the IP address which the HTTPD Apache service should be listened to. The next thing we're gonna look at is the document root folder. The document root folder is where your website files are located, which your users will be accessing. So if you go down this file, you will see an option called the document root. By default, the document root is located at var www html folder. For this demonstration, I will keep this default location as it is, but you are more than welcome to move this location to a different folder if you have already set up all your website files such as default html or index.htm files in a different location. Once this thing has been set up, what we're gonna do, we're gonna save and exit. And you can reopen the file just to make sure the saves have already been taken place. So we have the listen properly done. And that's the only thing we change. And everything looks good. So we'll exit. After saving the httpd.conf file, we can now restart our web server. To do that, we will enter systemctl restart httpd. Perfect. There are no error messages and everything seems to be working. But just to make sure, we will also check the status of httpd since we just restarted. So to do that, we'll go sys system CTL status HTTPD. And as you can see, it's showing us active and running. Now, the anonymous web service is currently running and we should be able to access the website through the IP address of this server. To do that, we will go open a web browser. In this case, I'm just gonna use the, the default one came with the CentOS, which is Firefox. And we're gonna enter the IP address of this server, which is 192.168.1.7, which we have set as the listening port for our web service on port 80, which is the default port for all web services, and press enter. And you will be greeted with a test web page and it will have some information from the Apache web service. This basically shows that you have a running HTTP website on an Apache web server, and it can deliver HTTP files to your end user. So this is basically a anonymous web access service using Apache web server on CentOS 8. As I mentioned before, the same steps can be taken to install Apache Web Server 
on your Linux Red Hat Enterprise server. And similar steps can be taken to install Apache Web Server on your other Linux distribution systems. Now we have the Apache Web Service up and running, and you can access the site locally. We're gonna see if we can access the site from a different computer on the same network. I will simply be using our Windows server to access the Apache server uh, web host. So let's use Google Chrome. And remember, the web address for our CentOS Apache server is 192.168.1.7. And because it is at the default port 80, you don't need to enter anything else. And we simply press Enter. And there you go. We are on the Apache server. And just to show that, if I go to command prompt, ipconfig slash all, This, uh, this Windows server is on 192.168.1.3, but this IP address is 192.168.1.7. That means this website is hosted elsewhere. It's not on this server. So if you go back to the CentOS machine, you can see the CentOS uh, IP config. So it's IF config. It's 192.168.1.7. That's the IP address for the CentOS machine. And when you enter that from a Windows computer, it gets you the Apache web page. In a different video, we will look at how we can change some files inside the Apache web server in the CentOS machine, and how you can use also authenticated web access, as well as much more detailed explanation of how we can modify certain files to fit different needs. You can subscribe to my channel so you can get a notification for that video when it gets posted in the future. Just a fun fact, the sanuja.com website has been hosted on Apache web server for the past 18 years. This will most likely not gonna change in the future. While the Windows IIS and its web server is also a good choice, Apache is a very popular choice for the web administrators. Thank you so much and have a nice day.